Thanks, Philip, for the generous introduction. I'm humbled by what you have said. But as you say, God is good, okay? And each one of us have different gifting. And even when Philip approached me some time ago to share, I told him that speak, public speaking is not my gifting. But nevertheless, he's a very persistent person. Uh, he will not let you go until you say yes to him. So it's my joy and privilege this morning to be here, you know, to share God's message with you on an interesting uh, subject about aging and finding joy in aging. Unfortunately, many churches have this particular issue. Even my own church, more than 50% are over 50 to 60 years old. So if I look around here, I think you also qualify uh, just like my church. So really it is uh, a joy to speak of people of the same age. So aging is a natural process of life. Yet it is often accom accompanied by unique challenges and uncertainties. We witness our body changing, our strength waning, I even noticed in my golf game that others seem to be hitting further and further away from me, no matter how hard I try. A few years ago, I do have some hairs in my head. Today, I'm almost bored, you know? So really, and we also tend to be long-winded in our conversation. We keep on repeating and people you say, I have heard that before, you know? But really, it is part and parcel of growing old. So I hope you don't expect a very long and long-winded uh, sharing this morning. But nevertheless, it is during those occasions we realize that we are getting old. Another natural process is to experience the loss of loved one. You know, during the past 12 months, I've lost three of my older sisters due to old age. Being number eight in a family of 10, I've already lost five, and of course, expecting more to come as we all age uh, together. But that is part and parcel of growing old. You know, many of us find ourselves navigating the complexity of retirement. We are worried about our health concern, okay? or the feeling of isolation. As more and more your friends move on, and as more of you become housebound, loneliness is part and parcel, you know? So with this, especially loneliness, it's easy for you and me in this age group to become overwhelmed by anxiousness as we confront the reality of growing old. However, as followers of Christ, we have this incredible opportunity to view aging okay, through the lens of faith and discover God's purpose and blessing within every season of our life. In the midst of these challenges, God's works provide us with wisdom, comfort and guidance. It reminds us that our worth is not dependent on our physical appearance or societal expectation, but rather on the, our identity as children of God. So today we will explore relevant scripture passages that speak on the importance of aging gracefully and finishing well. So there will be a fair bit of references to the scripture. And this is to recognize the authority of scripture in teaching us on aging. We will dwell on some and a collection, a collection of heartful prayers and reflection that touch upon the full range of human experiences. We also turn to the book of Romans and other gospel where we find powerful words of encouragement and assurance. 
So together, let us embark on this journey, seeking God's wisdom and grace as we explore what it means to find joy in the journey of aging and embrace God's purpose in this season of our senior life. May the Holy Spirit guide our heart and mind, and may this time of reflection draw us closer to God and inspire us to live our life with purpose okay, and intentionality. So before we proceed, let's take a moment to pray and inviting God's presence and guidance in our time together. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today with a heart full of gratitude for the gift of life. We thank you for your unwavering love and faithfulness throughout every season we encounter. As we delve into the topics of aging gracefully and finishing well, we invite your Holy Spirit to be our guide and teacher. Open our heart and mind, Lord, to receive your wisdom and encouragement and strength. May this time of reflection draw us closer to you and empower us to live out your purpose in every stage of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this morning, my sharing on finding joy in the journey of aging, aging will be in the following sequence. First, we acknowledge the brevity of life. Then we talk about trusting God's faithfulness in every season. And then the need to continue to grow spiritually even as we age. And important is to continue to serve others and then embrace a teachable spirit. So with this, I hope to walk through with you as to how we can age gracefully. When we ponder on growing old at this stage of our life, we tend to wonder how fast time flies. It is as if it is only just yesterday we finished our study, we got married, we worked hard to bring up our children, and now many of us are grandparents. Many years ago at my church retreat, Reverend David Wong shares on Psalm 90, verse 10, where he says, Our days may come to 70 or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and fly away. David Wong used a very interesting illustration to divide your life into different segments of the day, of the week. If you are age 1 to 10, you are Monday. When you are 11 to 20, you are Tuesday. It's so on until when you are age 60 to 70, you are on Sunday. Now, looking at the chart, many of us are what I guess, you know, beyond 70 and therefore we are recycled by God, okay? And that is a bonus. I am in the recycle stage. I'm all, oh, I just passed 77. So with this morning message, which is meant for the Saturday and the Sunday, it is definitely relevant even to the younger uh, member of the congregation. It is never too early to know and to be able to appreciate the senior in your midst. So also as you are able to prepare yourself much earlier, as you never know, okay, when the Lord will call you home. You know, over the years, I lost two nephews below the age of 50 uh, due to sickness, mostly cancer. So as we journey through life, it is essential for us to acknowledge the brevity and the frailty of, of assistance on this earth. You know, the span of our lives may vary, vary 
over the years, but the reality remains is life is a precious gift. Each passing moment is an opportunity to make it count. Even your presence here this morning is because you deliberately choose to spend your precious Sunday morning, okay, worshiping God. It's really wonderful that you choose to put God first on Sunday morning rather than going to do your weekly marketing or some people who enjoy trekking somewhere in Bukit Kiara. Now, in the current culture, we are often encouraged to chase after temporal pleasures, material possessions, and worldly achievement. It's a, it's a very strong temptation on that. And we can easily get caught up in the pursuit of success, accumulation of wealth, and desire to be famous. Yet the psalmist remind us that such pursuit, while they may bring you temporary satisfaction, but ultimately leave us empty. Brother and sister in Christ, is this not a familiar situation that we are often getting ourselves into? Always remember that our lives are not defined by the number of years we accumulate or the worldly accomplishment we achieve. Rather, true meaning okay, and purpose are found in our relationship with our God and our ability to impact the lives of others that are in our midst. I am very, very mindful of this responsibility. It is in our connection with our eternal God that we discover lasting significance. And acknowledging the brevity of life allows us to gain proper perspective, one that compels us to live intentionally and wisely. It reminds us that we have a limited time to fulfill God's purpose and to make positive difference in the life of those around us. He urged us to evaluate our priorities, ensuring that we invest our time and energy and resources in pursuit that aligns with God's kingdom. While the acknowledgement of liberty may bring a sense of urgency, it is not meant to instill fear or anxiety within us. Instead, it serves to as a reminder to us to treasure each moment to be present in the life of our loved one. You know, my great joy over the years is to have family dinner every Sunday night with my children and grandchildren, which we are going to have tonight again. Such was the joy of gathering as a family. We are reminded of God's love and blessing and his faithfulness to us as a family. Likewise, we are to use God's given gift and talents and time to bring glory to him. You know, a close friend of mine shared with me before his death in the early age of 50 that he regretted having spent so much time in his work with little time for his family and God. Let us not regret like my friend. Let us take positive step right this very moment and ask God to remind us of the need to focus on Him. Let us not be disheartened by the passing of time, but be inspired to live with intentionality and with purpose. <clears throat> As we embrace the brevity of life, let us seek God's wisdom in utilizing our time wisely, investing our and investing in internal endeavor and leaving lasting impact in this world. Now may this awareness of life fleeting nature spur us to cultivate 
meaningful relationship, pursue God-given purpose and passion, and engage in the act of love and service. Let us make the most of the time that we have been given. Cherish each day as an opportunity to glorify God and make the difference in the lives of others. Second point on aging gracefully is trusting in God's faithfulness in every season of our life. Now, having realized the importance for us to have a purposeful desire to live a life that will be meaningful in the eyes of God, we need to trust God's faithfulness in every season of our life. Psalm 71, verses 17, 18 says, O God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim the wondrous deeds. Even in old age and gray hair, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to those to come. Now the psalmist declares their trust in God's steadfastness, acknowledging that from their youth, God has been their teachers and guide. They have witnessed his wondrous deed and have experienced his faithfulness firsthand. So likewise, as we journey through different seasons of life, one thing remains constant, and that is the faithfulness of our loving God. Please note, trusting God's faithfulness is not limited to our younger years or a specific stage of our life. Our relationship with God is a long, lifelong commitment that transcends age, circumstances, and challenge. I cannot tell God that I will serve Him after I retire and have more time, or after I have made more money, or enough money. We must be like the psalmist above, plead to God that in all time we can trust Him, even in our old age. Our dependence on Him does not diminish with time. Our dependence on Him and our need for His presence is like what the psalmist stated earlier in Psalm 71, verse 17 to 18. I know this morning many of you here may currently encounter various difficulties, uncertainties, especially as we age. Our body grows frail and we may face health concern or the loss of loved one. Yet this morning I want to declare to you like the psalmist that we can hold on to the unshakable truth that our God is faithful. I can testify in no uncertain terms that as a family we have experienced his love, care, protection over the years. From my mother's miracle healing to my own journey as a businessman. Philip knows a lot of my life, especially as a businessman. God's faithfulness means that he remains by our side, providing comfort, strength, and guidance in every season. He never forsakes us or leaves us to navigate life alone, life challenges alone. Even when we may feel forgotten or overlooked by others, we can find solace in the assurance that God sees us, knows us, and cares deeply for us. So as we trust in God's faithfulness, we can also find purpose and meaning in our later life. The psalmist expressed their desire to proclaim God's might and power to another generation. So aging gracefully 
involve recognizing that our experience and our wisdom and faith are valuable resources that can impact, impact future generations. We can share our stories, our testimonies, and the faithfulness of God with those who come after us. I often remind my children what God has done for me, for us as a family. Our life becomes a living testimony of God's faithfulness, inspiring and encouraging others to trust Him too. So brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning, I want to assure you that in every season, God's faithfulness remains steadfast. We can trust Him to guide us, strengthen us, and to use us for His purpose. Our age does not diminish the impact we can have or work we can, that God can do through us. I want you to know whether you are young or old, God invites us to lean on Him, to find our hope and security in Him, and to continue proclaiming His wondrous deed throughout our life. I want you to know that as we embrace the faithfulness of our God, let us rest in His promise, knowing that He will sustain us, He will empower us, and He will use us to bring glory to His name. Also, as we age, we need to remember that our spiritual life needs to grow continuously. So does it mean that we only need to trust Him and do nothing else for ourselves? No, as retiree, many of you here are, we do have time in hand and we should try to spend time to continue to grow spiritually. I will highlight a few scripture verses that advise us on spiritual growth. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is His good, pleasing, perfect will. You know, as Christians, we are called not to conform to this world with the behavior and the custom that are usually selfish and corrupting others. Therefore, if we are to live out God's will, we must change our thoughts to God's thoughts rather than living as the world dictates us. The influence of media are very strong and the temptation to follow what the media is always there. So as followers of Christ, our spiritual journey is not confined to a particular age or stage of life. It is actually a lifelong process, okay? Transformation and deepening our relationship with God. So regardless of our age, it is essential to prioritize and actively pursue our spiritual growth, continuously renewing our mind, aligning ourselves to God's will. Now to achieve this desire of growing spiritually, we must seek God's presence. James 4 was as a come near to God, and he will come near to you. James encourages us to draw near to God, assuring us that God will draw near to us. As such, make it a habit to spend time in God's presence through prayer, worship, and meditation of His Word. Seek moments of solitude and silence to listen and to commune with Him. Second point is to study and meditate on Scripture, even as you age. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. 
In order to grow spiritually, we must regularly engage with the Bible. Study is teaching, memorizing key verses, although it's getting more difficult as we age to memorize scripture nowadays. But allow the works of God to shape our thinking, guide our decision, and transform our life. Also, each time as we are tempted, recalling scripture verse subconsciously will help us to resist doing it. The other point that will help you as you age is to cultivate a prayerful life. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. You no, know, it encourages us to pray without ceasing. Developing a lifestyle of prayer where you continually communicate with God throughout the day. Seeking his, press, his guidance, expressing gratitude, and presenting your needs before him. You know, different people have different ways of praying. Some of you faithfully set aside specific time and specific, specific place to pray. I, on the other hand, have this habit of saying prayer to him as the day progress. Okay? Be it at home, at work, or at play. Often I will verbalize if there is no one around me. I even sometimes complain and grumble with God, as God is my family father. I find it very refreshing as through this prayer, I am getting God involved with my daily activities. God has this uncanny way of pricking my conscience each time when I stray, or reminding me or warning me something that I need to address. So often when I wake up in the middle of the night and if I have problem with going back to sleep, I will ask the Lord, is there something you want to remind me? And typically some of my friends and children will receive texts from me written in the middle of the night. And after that, I will go back to sleep because I have released the burden on to them. So whatever your style, it does not matter. The important thing is constantly staying in touch with God via prayer. Invite the Holy Spirit to guide your prayer and deepen your intimacy with God. You know, one of my elders comfort shared with me and it got embedded in my mind that when you are lost for work to pray, invite the Holy Spirit to intervene. How true it is that as I often do the same. We also need, okay, as we age gracefully, to engage in Christian community if we want to grow spiritually. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 24, 25 says, So let us consider one another to provoke unto love and do good work, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, so much so, so much more as you see the days approaching. As we grow older, we tend to shy away from Christian community on the basis that we want to take life easy, okay? And you want to be relaxing. But Hebrew chapter 10, verse 24, 20, 25 says, remind us of the importance of gathering together with other believers, encouraging one another, spurring one another toward love, and good deeds. So for me, it is through this gathering and fellowship that I am kept in the loop on what is going on and prayer and where helps and prayer are needed. So let us consider, okay, one another, sorry, uh, 
So brothers and sisters, investing in a meaningful relationship within our church and Christian community, participating in worship, fellowship and discipleship, and service or even CG activities. I make it a point to have wholesome and godly fellowship where I work and I play. My circles of friends, especially the golfer, whether they are believe they are consists of believers and non-believers, but often sharing with them gospel when opportunity arises. More important, okay, is the testimony of our lifestyle as a child of God in their presence. You know, on one occasion after a golf game, during a lunch fellowship, we have a non-believer ex colleague we noticed that he was a bit down that day, and I used the opportunity to share our testimonies, gospel with him. That Sunday morning, when during his morning walk in the neighborhood, he was prompted to enter a church that had an ongoing service. There he was touched by the Holy Spirit. And he cried like a baby and he felt it very embarrassing as a non-Christian. After service, he called, called me and asked, what really happened? Of course, I told him he was ministered by the Holy Spirit. And shortly, he accepted Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, at our age, God can still use us. We only need to plant the seed of the gospel and trust the Holy Spirit to bring it to germination. You suddenly can get involved in your ministry, senior ministry, alpha ministry, whatever you have here. We are still able to be sharing the gospel if we are willing. Five on aging is embrace discipleship and mentoring. You know, Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, iron sharpen iron. One person sharpens another. You know, last month my church was doing this series on disciple making. It reminds us of the need to embrace discipleship and mentoring. Therefore, we need to seek out mentors and wise believers that will guide us in our spiritual journey. You know, Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpen iron, one person sharpen another. So surround yourself, okay, with individuals who will challenge, inspire, and help you to grow in your faith. I really like the chat group that was formed in my church after the last man retreat. Okay? Every day I would read their daily sharing and each will typically challenge one another with scripture verses or testimonies of what happened the previous day. It really reminds me about iron sharpening iron. I really want to encourage you even here, group yourself as a group in the chat group with the sole purpose of encouraging each other in faith, not in gossiping, okay, but truly sharing your experiences, okay. So your willingness to mentor at this stage of your life, okay will go a long way to leave a legacy not only on your children and grandchildren but even friends. Not only you are helping others but you also keep your mind shut. Many times we think that you know we don't have the capacity but because you need to share, because you exercise your mind, you keep your mind active and therefore, you keep it sharp. 
I have this habit of having regular coffee fellowship uh, on regular basis with friends and those who need a listening ear uh, advice on the problem. And I find it very refreshing. Not only I get free coffee, but I really have the privilege of sharing with them and listening to their matters. So while helping others, you are actually helping yourself because you continually grow spiritually as you share and also the side benefit of exercising your mind, which is really the key for us to age gracefully. The day you stop using your mind, exercising your mind, is the day you go downhill. So it is important. So in this way, you open yourself up to a deeper and more intimate relationship, not only with your friends, but with God. Our faith becomes more vibrant. Our character is refined because when you advise someone else, you cannot be doing the opposite. Okay? Our actions align more closely with God's will. So we become the vessels through which God's love, grace and truth flow into the community. So regardless of our age or stage of life, let us continue growing in our faith. Let us be intentional about our spiritual development and seeking God's presence in our life as we age, which is very, very important. All days, all times, God's presence becomes crucial for us. The other matters which, as we age, we need to look into is we need to serve others. Mark chapter 10, verse 45 says, Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As senior, it is good to serve others. The scripture in Mark 10, 45 reminds us that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So this morning, I would like to remind you of this important verse. Let us all engage in the act of love, compassion, service toward others. Look for opportunities to use your spiritual gift, talent, resources to make a difference in the lives of those around you. All of us here this morning too can serve God with the talent that God has given us irrespective of our age. Serving others not only bless them, but also deepen our own faith and spiritual growth. There are many opportunities to serve in your church. See your pastor, see uh, Philip for guidance and advice. The other facts about growing old is that to grow spiritually, we need to embrace a teachable spirit. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 says, Give instruction to a wise person, and they will still be wiser. Teach a righteous person, and they will increase in learning. One of the most difficult tasks is teaching a senior. I tend to be unteachable because I have a mindset on my own. But the scripture in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 says, Give instruction to a wise person, and they will still be wiser. So be open to correction, guidance, and learning from others. We all have to approach life with humility, recognizing that there is always more to learn and ways to grow in our understanding of God in His way. Trust me, there will be more peace in the house too if we senior 
have a more teachable spirit. Please note, this is a two-way traffic. Both parties need to give a lot and take a lot to have peace in the house. <clears throat> so our faith, okay, will become much more vibrant and our character refined if our actions align more closely with God's will. You and I can become vessels through which God's love and grace and truth flow into the world. So regardless of our age or stage in life, let us be intentional with our spiritual development. You know, as we conclude this morning reflection on finding joy in the journey of aging, let us remember that our journey is not just about our own personal fulfillment or living legacy, but ultimately it is about surrendering ourselves to God's perfect will. So in this light, I would like to encourage you to take practical steps to ensure, okay, <clears throat> that your desire and wishes are clearly spelled out to be known to your children and honored by them as you grow older. Take time, okay, to review and update your legal and financial document, power of attorney, and healthcare directive. Seek wise counsel to ensure that your wishes are clearly communicated and legally binding. To the young people here this morning and those who are listening, please take time to communicate with your parents on these important matters when opportunity arises. Be very gentle and careful in bringing up this matter. Uh, it can be sensitive sometimes, okay? So to avoid misunderstanding. We senior must remember we do not live forever. And any time is a good time to plan and then we leave the rest to the hand of God. Six weeks ago, I lost another sister who is healthy have no obvious signs of health issue. Yet, on waking up, complaints like discomfort slide into unconsciousness and pass away shortly. So in four months, I lost two sisters, and it is truly a wake-up call for all of us at this age. Secondly, for the seniors here, consider having an open and honest conversation with your loved one about your desire for your future care and specific wishes that you may have. For example, I wish to be taken care of at home, surrounded by my loved one and not with stranger in a nursing home. So communication is the key to ensuring that your loved one understands your hearts and can advocate your need when it arises. Lastly, remember, even as we make plans, we must hold them open with an open heart, recognizing that ultimately it is God who holds our life in His hand. Surrender your desire and your plan to Him, trusting that His journey and sovereignty will get every step of your journey. So brothers and sisters, by now you will notice that what I share with you is found in the Bible and the Word of God are the formula that I use all these years as, I, as my guide as I journey my life until I'm old and bored. 
You will notice my sharing have many references to the scripture verses, and I do not speak on my own authority. And those of you who are searching for an answer to your problem, besides talking to the leadership of the church, most of the time the answer is found in the Bible. To the younger people here this morning, my advice to you is also meant for you. Why this morning sharing we talk about journey of aging for the senior, it is very, very relevant for you too. Start young and you will have less headache and you'll be able to face life journey in the blessed way. <clears throat> Remember your Sunday school song which entitled, Read Your Bible Every Day. <clears throat> As a Sunday school uh, children, we sing a lot of that. So doing so will help us to grow. So thank you for bearing with me this morning as I have pre-warned you that, you know, as I age, my sharing will be a bit long-winded. But as we close, I want to extend an invitation to anyone who is facing challenges of growing old, feeling overwhelmed or in need of prayer and support. If you desire, if you desire assurance that you are not alone, and if you have specific concern or burden that you would like to be lifted in prayer, I invite you to come forward after the service, the pastoral team and the leadership will be here to pray for you, offering you a listening ear, providing support and encouragement that you need. Remember, we are all a family in Christ. Together we can walk this journey of aging with grace and strength. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the truth that we have encountered today about aging gracefully and living a legacy. Father God, we surrender our desire and plan and concern into your loving hand. We acknowledge that you are our ultimate guide and source of strength. Lord, we live up those in our midst today who are facing challenges of growing old. We pray for your comfort, peace, and assurance to surrender, surround them. Help them to lean on you in time of weakness and to find strength in your promises. And Lord, for those who are burdened with worries and uncertainties about the future, we ask for your guidance and wisdom in, to light their path. Give them clarity and discernment as they make decisions regarding their health care and personal vision. Father, we pray for unity and understanding within the family as they navigate the complexities of aging. May there be honest and open love and support among the family members. Help them to honor and respect the desire and wishes of their loved one. And as the church, may we walk with them and that the church be a place of love, acceptance and support for all generations. Help us to walk alongside one another, offering a helping hand, a listening ear and a fervent prayer. In all things, Lord, we trust in your faithfulness. We know that you are with us every step of the way, guiding, strengthening, and comforting us. We surrender ourselves and the aging process to you, knowing that you have a perfect plan and purpose. Thank you for each one of us here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.